perfect balance, control, coordination. The grace of champions. We start practicing very early, long before we can remember. And although few of us become champions, most of us develop an extraordinary degree of control over our bodies. All movements originate here in the brain, so complex that researchers are still unraveling the ways in which it controls countless physical movements and thought processes. We do know that the main surface areas are here, and that the most important regions inside the brain are the basal ganglia, the cerebellum, and the reticular substance. Through these three regions pass a complicated system of related messages that eventually reach the part of the body that is being moved. In fact, by the time we're two years old, we become capable of quite complicated eye and hand coordination. But if these control mechanisms are damaged, this coordination can be seriously affected. Spastic is the popular term for what doctors call cerebral palsy. It's caused by damage to one or other of these main areas of the brain. Once brain cells are damaged, the control of various parts of the body is affected. When the damage is mainly here, messages no longer run smoothly to the different parts of the body. They become rather like electric shocks. Involuntary movements occur that can cause a person's limbs to jerk violently. It makes ordered control of movement very difficult. This type of cerebral palsy is called aphetosis. When the damage is mainly in these areas, the messages become distorted, broken, unclear, as if the limbs were being pulled in different directions at the same time. The muscles seem to be stiff, and the limbs move in a slow, ponderous fashion. This type of cerebral palsy is called spasticity. The degree of damage varies in cerebral palsy and can affect more than one main area. Speech and hearing can be affected if this area is damaged. And the damage may extend to here, which may mean the person has a mental handicap as well as a physical one. Cerebral palsy is a major problem in Britain. A very rough estimate puts the number of people suffering from the disorder at around 100,000. And it's a problem that concerns all of us particularly as a child with cerebral palsy, can be born to any family. Its exact causes are largely a mystery. It's the, it's the, it's the emotional strain that's the greatest. I mean, the, the slow dawning that here is a child that is different from, every, from your sister-in-law, who's got one just the same age and isn't making your child as... You know how mothers compare babies, and Harriet was always not doing the things that other children of her age were doing. If someone can l write down a table of things that's going to happen, then most people can face that. But it is the kind of unknown quantity aspect of, mm. of the condition that is very hard to take. Anxieties like these that all parents with handicapped children share prompted a group to form the Spastic Society to fight for a brighter future for their children and the many thousands of families who have to face the enormous problems of bringing up a handicapped child. Now, over 20 years later, it's become the leading organization in the world for the care, welfare and training of people suffering from cerebral palsy. With 180 local groups in England and Wales, it's established, through their efforts, over 160 residential homes, training centers, hostels, industrial units and schools. Research is also an important part of the Spastic Society's activities and it's financed a unit at Guy's Hospital. Here, an intensive programme of research has been organised into the causes of cerebral palsy. But the answer to the problem doesn't only lie at the end of the microscope. That's just one approach. The care of newborn babies, particularly those born prematurely, and trying to discover mothers who may be at risk during pregnancy are as important as any scientific breakthrough. 
It's a long haul, attacking on a number of fronts, but reducing the incidence of cerebral palsy by perhaps one or two percent a year. For the child with cerebral palsy, one of the first contacts with the spastic society may well be here. If he's going to benefit fully from the range of services the society offers, he needs to be assessed to find out just what he can and cannot do. Assessment mainly involves trying to overcome communication difficulties and map out a picture of what lies behind those difficulties in terms of his potential. If we provide the, the pointing and the questions, the speech, and give him a chance to sit and think about um, those sort of problems. John is a severe athetoid. His speech and coordination are very limited, so there's little point trying to use ordinary communication methods to get through to him. OK, let me do some pointing, John. You ready? Uh -huh. We're looking for the one that's different. I is it that one? Uh, is it that one? Yes, it is that one. OK. Which one is, is different there? We have to look at them all, don't we? And one of them's not the same as the others. Yeah. Is it, is it this one? Is it that one? Good boy. Although John has hardly any means of expressing himself beyond nodding his head, by the time these various tests were completed, his IQ was assessed at 120. A generation ago, his future would have been bleak. He'd have been classified as impossible to educate and would probably have spent most of his life in an institution for the mentally handicapped. But now John will join the thousands of children with cerebral palsy who've benefited from the many special schools the Spastic Society has built. Schools like Ingfield Manor, where the Society has pioneered new techniques for the teaching of the severely physically handicapped child. At Ingfield, education of mind and body are seen as inseparable. The teacher of reading and writing also teaches walking, sitting and hand control. The day-to-day -day routine consists of a series of tasks broken down into simple movements, repeated time and time again. I kick. I kick. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. I roll over. It looks a bit like brainwashing, and in a way it is, because what the teacher is trying to do by constant repetition is recondition the child's movements, so that this simple gripping exercise develops into this. Then to using the fingers like this. To using a pencil. And where that isn't possible, the child can be taught to use a typewriter. Or if that isn't possible, technology can simplify the task. What does it say? Mm -hmm. Think about slowing it down. Ready? Clean the first one. Give it a good clean and keep singing. One. Clean the second
step left and stretch. For the children at Ingfield, the aim is physical independence. But not all spastic children are that lucky. This child is physically handicapped, mentally handicapped, and deaf. He's a pupil at Meldrath Manor, a school designed by the Spastic Society to provide a stimulating environment and the most up-to-date teaching techniques for 120 children who are mentally as well as physically handicapped. One of the main characteristics of mental handicap is that the concentration span is often limited to a matter of seconds. So learning by ordinary teaching methods often produces poor results. In this classroom, the children have a teacher, paints and toys, the usual classroom materials. But the progress of each child is carefully monitored through a one-way mirror and recorded on videotape. Progress can be compared with earlier results and any increase in the child's concentration span quickly recognized and built upon. Mechanical aids to teaching are also widely used, particularly with children suffering from the athetoid form of cerebral palsy who have difficulty using their hands. Some of the children at Meldrath are also deaf, which particularly complicates the teaching of the mentally handicapped. And to overcome this, a special signing system has been introduced. What? What is the boy doing? Good, good boy. The Paget-Gorman system has a number of advantages over other types of sign language. Each word has a separate sign. You can indicate tenses and various suffixes and affixes. In fact, all the detail of the spoken word. This means that for the deaf child, language and understanding can be developed to a far greater degree than would be possible with traditional sign language. You are very clever. These children are no different in terms of their potential from the child who lives in the hospital for the mentally handicapped. The difference is that these children have a unique chance to develop, thanks to the resources and expertise at Meldrath. As they develop, they become more alert and responsive, and so they appear less handicapped and start to develop personalities of their own. What are you going to sing then? Holly Wally all the day. Holly Wally all the day. Oh, I went down south for to see myself singing. Holly, 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 The Thomas Delarue School, and an atmosphere very different from the quiet protectiveness many people associate with schools for the handicapped. Here, great emphasis is placed on competitiveness and on being as physically independent as possible. For school leavers, coming to terms with the outside world is just as important as passing O or A levels. A survey in the local town of access facilities in shops for a wheelchair illustrates the simple point that the outside world doesn't make that many allowances for the handicapped. No, no, um... This film has looked at the school years and at what the Spastic Society does with the help of its many local groups to provide opportunities for these children to develop their full potential. 
But spastics don't suddenly disappear at 16 or 18, and the Spastic Society aims to help them through their adult life. Every year, for instance, their social workers and careers advisory officers pay over 20,000 visits to the parents of handicapped children and to adult spastic people. And now, over 3,000 spastics, once considered unemployable, are holding down jobs in commerce and industry. But the problems that the adult spastic faces are daunting. Problems of further education and housing. Problems of mobility and employment. And the spastic society, with its own money or in partnership with local authorities, tries to provide solutions. Any progress made is all too often an uphill struggle against apathy or attitudes which, though polite and well-meaning, appear prejudiced. What can it be like to be stared at every day of your life when you walk down the street or go into a room? To have to fight to be accepted as the person you know yourself to be and not as someone people feel embarrassed by or sorry for? These are questions most of us are lucky enough not to have to answer. It would be nice to think that when this girl grows up and takes her first steps into the outside world, she won't have to answer them either. Push. Left. Left. Step. Right. 